गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी आई एम राजगोपाल फैकल्टी एंड लीगल प्रैक्टिशनर वी आर डिस्कसिंग इन द लास्ट फ्यू क्लासेस अबाउट द साइबर ला लेट एस कंटिन्यू अवर डिस्कशन बिफोर गोइंग टू टूडेज अजेंडा लेट एस सी वॉट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन द लास्ट क्लासेस इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द एट्रीब्यूशन एक्नोलेजमेंट dispatch of electronic records secure or securing the electronic records and securing the digital signatures all these points we have discussed in the last class my dear friends now in this class today's class we will discuss about the regulation of certifying authorities and appointment of controllers and other officers here in the last class we have discussed chapter 4 and 5 of the information technology act now let us move on to chapter 6 of the information technology act in chapter 6 mainly it will uh, gives the legal provisions under which we can appoint the controller of certifying authorities and the different officers who will be under the controller of certifying authorities their functions qualifications period of their office and all these things and what do you mean by a certifying authority what are the roles and responsibilities of certifying authority who can appoint the certifying authority how the certifying authorities can apply for the license under cca that is controller of certifying authority what is the eligibility criteria that should be there for applying for the certifying authority under which provision they can give or they can issue digital signature certificates how the license will be given to the certifying authorities how the license will be renewed of this particular certifying authorities all these things we will discuss in the today's agenda my dear friends first let us go to the uh, discussion what do you mean by a certifying authority okay under section 17 of the information technology act there is a clear mention uh, about the certifying authority see here the central government has the provision to appoint the certifying authority so central government will establish a body where there will be a controller of certifying authorities under the controller there will be a deputy controllers assistant controllers will be appointed depending on the requirement depending on the requirement there will be only one controller there can be depending on the requirement they can be n number of deputy controllers and n number of assistant controllers okay and their roles responsibilities will we will discuss in the next few slides so here the central government by the way of gazette notification last class also we have discussed gazette uh, in simple words if you want to tell it is the news uh, released by the government either it may be a central government or it may be a state government what are all the functions that they are going to perform okay that will be known as gazette they will release a gazette periodically and there will be a notification in the gazettes about the activities of the government okay stand of the government in the particular uh, situation or in particular uh, day okay so here by way of gazette notification certifying authority will be appointed by the central government that is that provision is given in section 17 of information technology act okay so the central government may decide 
the number of deputy controllers as we have discussed assistant controllers um, how many numbers can be decided but there will be a only one controller deputy controller and assistant controller posts how much and what are all the areas that we they have to work everything will be decided by the central government and then the qualification experience and terms and conditions of the services everything will be noted by the central government and the head office of the controller in which place the head office of the central government uh, sorry controller has to be established that will be given by the central government and what are all the branch offices that has to be established in which place the branch offices has to be established and then the seal of the controller okay this is also mentioned in the section 17 of the it act here uh, it will mean that the central government is the authority under section 17 of the information technology act how it can appoint the controller and the different uh, positions under the controller of certifying authority my dear friends here we have discussed in the last few classes there will be an authority to the central government state government and in some fields both central and state government can act can take the decision okay here it is mainly the central government who will take or who will appoint the controller of certifying authority okay so next let us discuss about the functions of the uh, certifying authorities functions of the controller okay functions of the controller let us discuss one after the other so here don't get confused here we are discussing about the controller of certifying authority certifying authority is a body which is established will get a license from the controller and they will start working on issuance of the digital sign signatures okay digital signature certificates to the person who will apply for this digital signature certificates under the certifying authority that I am clarifying now so here the functions of the controller that is there that is given the clear functions of the controller is given in section 18 of information technology act okay here the supervision over the certifying authority it can supervise the activities of the different certifying authorities who who are eligible to issue the digital signature certificates okay that will be directly under the control of uh, ca cca that is controller of certifying authority and certifying the public key of the uh, ca okay ca will be having the public and private key so certifying that public key will be the main function of controller of uh, certifying authority and standards to be maintained by ca what are all the standards that they have to maintain how much staff they have to appoint how they have to have their office all these things will be given by the controller specifying the qualification and experience of the employees of the CA as I have told the standards okay and specifying the conditions of business of CA what are all the different conditions how they have to collect the fees how much they have to collect how they have to audit how they have to maintain the accounts everything will be given by the controller of certifying authority specifying the pattern of digital signatures specifying the form and the contents of DSC and the key specifying the form of accounts maintained by the certifying authority and then specifying the terms and conditions of the auditors to be appointed okay how they have to appoint the auditors how they have to maintain the accounts 
how they have to submit the reports to the controller and what date they have to submit all these reports all these will be these are the functions of controller of uh, certifying authorities specifying the establishment of any electronic system of uh, certifying authority specifying the manner in which the ca shall conduct the dealing with the subscribers okay and resolve any conflict of interest between ca and the subscribers and laying down the duties of certifying authorities and maintaining the database containing the disclosure of records of every uh, certifying authority here the main function of the controlling controller or controller of certifying authority is mainly to see how the certifying authorities are functioning okay at any point of time the controller has the powers to take back the license or to suspend the license of a certifying authority which is established under the controller certifying authority is a private thing okay yeah, with the certain eligibility criteria they can apply before the controller uh, for having their certifying authorities so here the controller of electronic signatures or controller of electronic data these are all the functions of controller of electronic data okay let us discuss next foreign certifying authorities see here um, uh, there may be some foreign certifying authorities okay the eligibility uh, how to verify okay under what circumstances uh, the foreign certifying authorities may be allowed okay all these things will be decided by the controller of uh, certifying authorities that is specified in section 19 of information technology act so section 17 section 18 and section 19 section 17 will uh, we will uh, clearly tell how to appoint the controller of certifying authority and section 18 will clearly uh tells how a uh, controller of certifying authority should function and clearly section 19 will clearly tell about the foreign certifying authority under what circumstances a foreign certifying authority may be given an approval and how it has to function okay that will be discussed under section 19 so one more important act of uh, or function which is clearly uh, given in the section 20 of it act is uh, all the controllers should act all the caa cca sorry cca should function as a repository cca controller of certifying authority should function as a repository repository means a database we can call shall maintain all dscs issued under this act it has to maintain all digital signature certificates issued by different cas it has to be maintained can make use of the hardware software and the procedure to secure the intrusion and misuse timely it can give the instructions and it has to maintain the hardware so required hardware and required software and the pro procedures it has to have the procedures uh, to secure the intrusion and misuse of the cs okay of the misuse of dscs okay that is the main responsibility of controlling authority and then observe any other standards to ensure the secrecy and security of uh, digital signatures is assured and it has to maintain that the controller should maintain the database of public keys 
what are all the public keys issued by the controlling authorities should be maintained by the uh, controller CCA by the controller of certifying authority that is also mentioned in the section 20 of the information technology act mainly the CCA the controller of certifying authority should maintain the database which should contain all the activities of CA which is registered under particular CCA okay it has to maintain it should maintain the repository okay next up to section 21 okay sorry up to section 20 we have discussed about the controller of certifying authority okay here from section 21 onwards here how it certifying controller of certifying authority will issue the license to a particular certifying authority will be discussed in the next sessions or next sections of IT Act 2000 okay so here license to issue a digital signature certificates okay anybody who want to issue the DSC digital signature certificate should apply before the CCA they have to take the license and then they will be eligible to issue the DSCs the section 21 here clearly uh, tells us about the how to apply for the license okay here the submission of the paperwork to an issuer okay first they have to do certain paperwork they have to issue uh, the they have to apply before the controller of certifying authorities about how they want to proceed further so here the submission of paperwork to the issuer any person can apply for that they are free to apply any person can apply uh, for having the uh, license to issue the DSC and under section subsection he has to fulfill the specified qualification expertise manpower financial resources infrastructure facilities they have to fulfill okay that is there anybody can apply under section 21 of the information technology act but they have to have the qualifications what is required what is specified by the controller of certifying authority and their expertise they have to prove as mentioned by the certifying uh, controller of certifying authority they should have some expertise and they should have some manpower they have to appoint a manpower they have to establish an office they have to establish an infrastructure as per the standards given by the controller of certifying authorities and they have to have the financial resources to maintain the office of uh, control certifying authority and the infrastructure facility they should have and uh, with this if they have all these things minimum criteria as mentioned in the subsection 1 of section 21 they can apply for a license to issue the digital signature certificate so here the supporting documents they have to provide I will list one or two they have to give their identification cards proof of their identity and the company identification under which section the company has been established okay under the company has been established whether they have a valid registration of the company okay all these supporting documents they have to give under whose name that um, they are taking the uh, license all these qualifications and all these things they have to apply uh, with this they have to give the supporting documents and once after the license is issued to 
uh, issue the digital signature certificate and it will be valid for a period prescribed by the central government it can be a five years term then they have to go for renewal okay it can be a one year two year or whatever maybe depending on their expertise okay at the first in instance they may give it for two years the central government at the first instance they may give it for two years once they complete successfully the two years the license can be renewed subjected to subjected to certain conditions it can be renewed and the license period can be ex uh, extended Lic license period can be extended or it can be renewed once again that license is not transferable okay it, we can't transfer or it is not inheritable okay inheritable means if it goes to uh, heirs legal heirs whatever we call uh, it can be transferred to the legal heirs it is not there it is not transferable to any other person or it cannot be inheritable means if something happens to the license holder in case of the death of the license holder immediately uh, the he legal heirs cannot appear that will stand cancelled the license gets cancelled and the inheres or uh, the legal heirs has to once again freshly apply for the license as a procedure and subject to the terms and conditions at any point of time the controller has an authority to withdraw or to suspend the license if he feels some misappropriation that is going on in the certifying authority office of the certifying authority so the section 21 clearly discusses or gives the provision how to apply what are all the paperwork that has to be done for applying for the license before the con controller and once if the license is given up to what time they can hold the license whether it is transferable or not and what are all the terms and conditions that has to be followed while having the license to issue the digital signature certificates okay so then uh, application for license section 22 will give the application uh, what are all the necessity documents that has to be attached for applying for the license before CCA the form as prescribed by the central government form what are all the things what are all the fields should be there in the form will be prescribed by the central government along with that form they have to give the certificate of practice uh, certificate of practice in simple terms means how uh, from what time they are practicing from what time they are in field or otherwise uh, to have a license whether they have any previous work previous experience of working under some uh, license some certifying authorities with the certifying authorities that will constitute a certificate of practice okay and the payment of fee not exceeding to 25,000 they have to give the uh, they have to pay the fee in a crossed uh, check or it may be a DD drawn in the name of controller of uh, certifying authority that has to be given and the identification of application as specified okay the controlling authority controller will specify what are all the identification requirements okay identification requirements they can ask for the company certificate they can ask for the identification of all the directors who are there in the company okay that is depends on the controller and the application that you are going to submit okay the standards will be given by the controller of certifying authorities okay and other other documents as prescribed by the central government timely the central government will give what are all the other certificates what are all the other certificates they have to produce before the authority for getting the license under section 22 of the information technology act okay 
So the next is uh, renewal of the license. As we have discussed, my dear friends, section 23 will give the renewal of license. How the license can be renewal it is not inheritable as we have discussed under section 21 it is not inheritable it is not transferable and it is limited to a time as specified by the central government central government will make the rules or the controller will make the rules controller will be give the guidelines the time up to which a person or a company can hold the license okay after that immediately they have to give an application in a prescribed form for the renewal of the license okay main thing that we have to, there are n number of uh, points the n number of uh, documents that uh, they have to submit to show that they have successfully carried out the responsibility of the license or the responsibility of issuing the digital signature certificate as per with the uh, rules and regulations okay that is given by the controller they have to give the proof of all these things and along with that they have to give the application for the renewal of the license and the fees not exceeding uh, 5000 rupees and shall be not less than 45 days before the expiry of <coughs> the validity they have to apply for the renewal of the license before the 45 days before 45 days one and a half months before they have to apply for the uh, renewal of the license <coughs> the time period is because <coughs> the processing time it will take if they apply for the uh, renewal at the date of the expiry itself they have to give they have to the controller has to go through all the details how they have per performed in the previous years is there any complaint is there any contradiction okay all these things they have to verify they have to verify the documents for that a uh, section in the section 23 it is clearly mentioned that before 45 days only they have to apply for the renewal of the license so that uh, there will not be any uh, disruption there will not be any discontinuation of the uh, issue of uh, functioning of controlling authority controlling authority in between okay there should not be any uh, there should not be any delay okay there should not be any break of this controlling authority the, for that reason only the section 23 will gle will uh, tell clearly about uh, the they have to apply one and a half months before the expiry of the license uh, for the uh, renewal of the license okay so this is about the renewal of license that is section 23 and the section 24 will clearly tells or gives the power to the controller of certifying authority to issue the license or to reject the license okay to the grant or the rejection of license okay or here it will tell the controller after verification can grant the license or reject okay the very uh, it, it, it will verify the documents which is submitted if it feels the controller feels that uh, the document is clear all the relevant documents are up to date and that particular person or a particular agency can be issued with the license or the re license can be re renewed then only they can uh, renew or otherwise if there is any lacuna if the procedure is not followed while uh, submitting the document if the some of the documents are missing 
or not able to uh, furnish those documents then the controller has all the provisions to reject under section 24 of uh, information technology act but uh, they have to give a proper reason why they are rejecting without giving the without uh, giving the proper reason they can't reject after giving a proper uh, reason why they are rejecting and a proper opportunity has to be given an opportunity has to be given for the person who has applied for the license so he can present if there is a lacuna in the documentation why there is a lacuna is it proper okay is it a convincible by seeing that they have to proceed they have to reject the li uh, they have to reject the grant of license okay uh, they have to reject the grant of license they have to a proper opportunity has to be given uh, for presenting the case we, uh, if without giving a proper opportunity it has been rejected means that will be against to the section 24 of it act okay so the next one is section 25 the controller may suspend okay it is the rejection section 24 will discuss about the rejection and the grant of the license here section 25 will discuss about the suspending the application of IT uh, application of a license okay the application is false and incorrect it can suspend okay uh, if it finds in between the license is issued in between if it finds if the controller of certifying authority finds that there is a false incorrect statements false and incorrect documents has been attached it can suspend file to comply with the terms and conditions timely they have to give the reports there it may be an audit report or any other report as specified by the central government as specified by the controller of certifying authority they have to comply with the terms and conditions timely in uh, it is not to if it is issued the license means it will not be a permanent timely they have to provide uh, they have to comply with the terms and conditions if they fail to do that it can be it will uh, stand suspended fail to maintain the standards there are certain standards how to maintain the office how to maintain the staffs what are all the qualification of the staff <clears throat> how to issue under what standards they have to issue the uh, electronic certificates all these things will be mentioned if it is failed to maintain the standards then also it can suspend okay contravened with the provisions of the act if there is a contravention in the act okay in the maintenance of the act if they have gone against the act then also it can be suspended if there is any pending inquiry order if there is any order inquiry is ordered then also the license stands suspended <coughs> and <coughs> it is the main thing during the suspension the certifying authority should not issue any dsc digital signature certificate okay if it is issued then it is a act punishable under the law <coughs> if it is suspended means they have to wait they have to approach the proper authority they have to make their uh, stand before the uh, controller of certifying authority and they have to cancel the suspension order then only they are eligible for issuing the uh, digital signature certificate <clears throat> otherwise they are not eligible during the suspension period they are not authorized to issue any of the licenses okay that is there under section 25 of the information technology act so next <coughs> the suspension or revocation notice has to be given as per the section 26 a proper notice uh, prior to that why they are suspending okay whether sufficient time has to be given the controller should publish the notice 
okay it has they has to publish the notice it has to be communicated to the authorities and a proper time has to be given uh, why your uh, license could be suspended where you are going against the law okay how we are not maintaining the standards uh, stating all these things they have to issue a notice okay to the certifying authorities if they comply with that with a prescribed time if they appear before the controller and the if they explain if they rectify and if they give the report that we have rectified we have we are maintaining the standards then uh, with that only they can continue the license they may not go for the suspension level of suspension okay but the notice has to be given and it has to be properly communicated to the proper authorities it has to be communicated so the section 26 will clearly tells how to issue the notice at what time they have to issue the notice what time should be given how they have to make sure that notice is reached a particular license holder all these things are mentioned uh, in the section 26 of the IT Act okay next section section 27 of the IT Act power to delegate so if there is any inquiry constituted of or if there is a uh, some work that has to be taken care it is the controller can authorize he can take up directly or he can authorize deputy controllers okay for that particular activity to go into the suspension order to look into the suspension order of particular uh, certifying authority he can appoint the deputy controller assistant controller or any other officers okay uh, <clears throat> to exercise the power of controller okay he is having the power of controller but finally the decision will be uh, signed by the controller <clears throat> but under section 27 <clears throat> of the IT Act the controller has the power to delegate the duties or uh, <clears throat> his powers he can delegate to his deputy or assistant controllers or to any other officer he deems to be fit to carry out that particular action uh, <clears throat> instead of the controller and section 28 okay power to investigate the contravention if there is a contravention arises if the controller feels that CA is going against to the act against to the law against to the act mentioned in the IT Act 2000 or against to any other acts against to the constitution then the um, uh, power is given to the controller to investigate in the matter from the section 28 of IT Act uh, no, power controller or any other officer has the power can exercise the powers uh, which is as with that of the income tax act 1961 he can exercise the power he can uh, investigate he can take the custody of the computers which are there he can verify he can uh, um, visit the office of certifying authority he can take the audit reports and he can verify where there is a misappropriation of the documents or accounts or whatever may be all these are the powers given to the controller okay if there is any contravention happens okay with respect to the certifying authority okay and it is having the power to uh, investigate the matter from uh, as per the income tax act 1961 okay that is there in the section 28 of the information technology act okay next let us go to uh, the access to the computer as uh, the previous section they can access if there is a, com a contravention any computer can be seized it can be accessed any technical assistance can be taken okay uh, with respect to analysis of the computer uh, it can assign another private authority to uh, go with respect to that so that they can access the computer they can go into the computer they can verify the database that are maintained all these things are there 
and section 30 procedure to be followed by certifying authority now we are coming to the certifying authority what are all the procedures they have to maintain okay once after getting the license that will be called as a certifying authority they are authorized to issue the digital signatures certificates okay they are the what are the procedures that they have to maintain all the systems are secure from intrusion and misuse they have to pro install a proper software so that uh, there will not be any intrusion and misuse of the computer and all the computers will be under the control of uh, a particular person appointed for that particular purpose and a reasonable reliability in the service okay. the reliability has to be given adhere to the security procedures <coughs> observe such other standards as prescribed in the regulations they have to adhere to the following things as per the section 30 they have to maintain properly all these uh, activities in a proper way so that uh, their license will be continued okay so and the compliance of uh, act section thir the, uh, 31 every CEA shall secure ensure that every person engaged by it complies with the provisions of the act rules and regulations of the act order made by their under okay they have to comply i have to i have told they have to give the compliance report to the controller as and when required compliance means they have to fulfill the points mentioned by the controller under the provisions act always they have to fulfill uh, they have to maintain how it has to be maintained as mentioned in the act they should not go against to the act and rules and reg regulations and they have to give training to the person who is engaged or the employee who is there in the certifying authority it has to be ex uh, uh, trained properly so that he has to work as per the provisions of the act rules and regulations and other acts which is other rules and regulations made from the controller he has to work according to that and he have to comply as and when required and the display of license it is clearly mentioned section 32 will clearly mention all the certifying authorities should maintain should display in a proper place so that anybody approaches that certifying authority for the digital signature certificates they will come to know that the, he is authorized he is having the license what is the date of issuance of license up to what period he is eligible to issue the DSC digital signature certificate that will be mentioned in the license certificate okay if it is expired then uh, the person who will approach us for DSC will come to know that the, he is not eligible okay then he will ask for the explanation why how he can is, issue the digital signature certificate so the license issued the renewal date everything has to be mentioned properly in a proper place uh, in the certifying office of the certifying authority that is clearly mentioned in section 32 of the IT Act okay coming to the section 33 surrender of the license every CA whose license is suspended or revoked shall immediately surrender the license to the controller he has to immediately submit the license surrender the license if he fails then he will be punishable under this particular act with the uh, imprisonment and it may be a fine or it may be both okay send the section 34 the disclosures the every ca shall disclose in a manner specified in the uh, regulations he has to give the disclosures use the reasonable efforts to notify any person who is likely to be affected and act according to the procedures specified in the certification okay these are all the disclosures that he has to provide uh, under the IT Act 2000 disclosures 
here means every certifying authority can disclose the matter okay if there is any uh, person who is going against if the dsc the digital signature certificate is misused then he can disclose and he can disclose if somebody is mis misusing the digital signature certificate means he can notify who are all the person who can be affected with this misuse of digital signature certificate okay and and he can act with the procedures specified in the certification okay so with this uh we will conclude the chapter 6 of the information technology act where there is a clear mention of uh the controller of certifying authority that is cca what are all the powers of cca and who can become controller who can become deputy and assistant controllers their eligibility qualification after that the controlling authority who can be the controlling authority how to apply for the license to become a licensed controlling authority to issue the digital signature certificate how our different sections how the sections of it act will support these acts okay will support these procedures okay how it has been legalized under the it act so with this uh, we will conclude again the reference uh, purely the information technology act 2000 and your reference book okay as referred by the vishveshwarya technological university okay with this we will conclude thank you very much for uh, attending my session thank you